cell organelles if you remember in our previous session on cells we have seen some of the basic components of a cell like say cell membrane and cytoplasm and also we know that just like how humans need organs to perform various functions cells require organelles to perform these specific functions so we can say that cell organelles are similar to organs in a human system in our last session we have also discussed that plants and animals are different based on their structure and functions so to perform these functions their cell organelles will also be different some of the cell organelles may be present in a plant cell but absent in an animal cell or say vice versa but majorly they have similar cell organelles which function together to keep the cell alive and now in this session we will study the organelles within the cell in detail and simultaneously we would also learn the difference in an animal cell and a plant cell with respect to their contents so moving on what is a cell organelle As you can see here cell organelles are individual parts within a cell that work together to keep the cell alive and in a broader picture keeping the organism alive Scientifically a cell organelle is defined as a specialized subunit within a cell with a definite shape structure and which has its individual membrane or covering Now we will be looking at the organelles one by one in detail So to start with do you see this round shaped structure present in the center of the cell since it is present in the center this organelle is called as the nucleus which means core of the cell so we all know a human brain controls the functioning in the body in a similar way the nucleus controls the functioning in the cell so it won't be wrong to regard the nucleus as the brain of the cell So how and what exactly does it control? It controls or determines our physical appearance because of some material which is present within the nucleus. This material can be called as DNA. We have heard a lot about DNA. It stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. Our DNA is passed on to us by our parents and this is the reason why we all look similar to our parents. but we won't say it is 100% identical to them as there is some amount of dna which is different and because of this difference there won't be any individual on this planet with the same identical dna as yours this uniqueness makes studying the structure and functions of a dna so important the dna is in the form of very long strands in the nucleus of each cell Now consider an example say that if we have to try fitting all these long cotton threads in a small box how would we do it we would have to wind and spin them together and make them in a form of a roll right so to fit the long strands of dna it has to be highly coiled and compressed and after all the coiling it forms a rod shaped structure which we call as a chromosome All these contents are fit into a nucleus by a double covering or membrane around the nucleus. Since it is present around the nucleus, it is called as a nuclear membrane. It can be inner nuclear membrane and outer nuclear membrane. So, a quick fact about the nuclear membrane. Some organisms like bacteria lack this nuclear membrane. and the contents of the nucleus are therefore scattered and not bound together thus the nucleus won't have a definite shape such a type of undefined nucleus structure is called as a nucleoid so here we are done talking about the nucleus so moving on we have said that the nucleus is the control center of the cell but both the nucleus and the cell requires proteins and fat for its functioning So for this there's an organelle which produces the required proteins and fat and it is present close to the nucleus it is so close that it emerges from the outer membrane of the nucleus 
and extends to form a large network of sheets and tubes which is present within the plasma or the fluid of the cell. So because of the location and structure, this organelle gets its name as an endoplasmic reticulum. Uh, are we good till here? Yes, so moving on. If you observe this large network under a microscope, you will see that some part of it has particles or grains attached to it. But what do these particles actually do? So just as how we get our proteins from the food we eat, cells get their proteins because of these particles which are called as ribosomes. And because of this, it appears rough. So this part here with ribosomes is called as a rough endoplasmic reticulum. But what about the part where we do not see any particles or grains? This part that appears smooth because of the lack of ribosome particles is called as the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. It produces fat molecules required by the cell to build up its covering or as we know the cell membrane. Isn't this fascinating? But apart from this, the smooth endoplasmic reticulum only in the liver cells has an important additional function. We humans, knowingly or unknowingly, may tend to consume many toxic or say dangerous materials like say drugs, alcohol, pesticides and insecticides which can get into our system by the food we take. So the smooth endoplasmic reticulum in the liver cells helps to detoxify or remove these harmful substances from our body. And that is why the liver is known as the purifier of the body. And this brings us to the end of the endoplasmic reticulum. So in this way we've seen two organelles of the cell that is the nucleus and the endoplasmic reticulum. Let's have a recap of all the terms we just studied in this session. Also do catch up in the next session where we'll be discussing the other cell organelles. But till then, try the small exercise. Let's match column A and column B. I hope you've got them right. Until the next session, follow your curiosity. If you want to know more about biology, do subscribe to Let's Tute. And if any doubt comes up in your mind, you can ask me in the comments below. Also, you can share this video for your friends who find biology really difficult. So till the next time, thank you.